SCTV now begins its programming day. Starring John Candy, Joe Flaherty, Eugene Levy, Andrea Martin, Catherine O'Hara, Harold Ramis, and Dave Thomas. Television like you've never seen before. With special guest star, Jane Eastwood. Oh, I hate Air Canada. Every year they bring thousands of tourists. And what's the first thing those tourists want to do? They want to sightsee me. Hey, Burl, look. A baby seal. Real cutie. Yeah, smells like crap. Kill them, fella. Come on. Oh, I should have moved to Australia. Look at that nitwit with the baseball bat. Oh, I hate Canada. Get your hands on a Labrador slugger. The best in baseball bats. It's 6 a.m. and time for the SCTV AM News. I'm Floyd Robertson. <laughs> I'm Floyd Robertson. And I'm Earl Cannonberry. And this is the news. Today's top story... <laughs> Wake up. What's the matter with you? Today's top story, Dr. Hugo Fitzbinder, 85-year-old winner of the Nobel Peace Prize, died today in Salzburg, Austria. Dr. Fitzbinder was the last of the five people who fully understood Albert Einstein's theory of relativity. The International Academy of Science has therefore proclaimed that, from now on, nothing is relative. <laughs> And that's the news. It's not the news. <laughs> Another revolution in Hungary today as Russian tanks rolled through the city of Budapest, trampling innocent pedestrians, uh, women, and children. They didn't care what they rolled over. They drove into the city and then went home. Apparently, it wasn't a revolution at all. They just wanted to make sure those Hungarians were on their toes, according to Soviet ambassador. Oh, uh, Alexei who? Alexei Koznersen. Koznikin's nation. Early this morning at Cedars of Lebanon Hospital, celebrated Warner Brothers cartoon characters Porky and Petunia Pig succumb to the swine flu. <laughs> Interment will be held tomorrow morning at the Jimmy Dean Pork Sausage Factory. <laughs> Earl. <laughs> Earl. And that's the news. That's not the news. What's the matter with you? I'm sorry, Floyd. I happen to be tired. I was up till 4 a.m. doing the late night news report. And were you there? No, you don't have it in your contract. You don't do those late night news reports, no. I make minimum, I make scale. 200 cheap dollars a week. And out of that, I've got commission, I've got union dues, I've got income tax to pay. $40 a week I give to my mother, and what's left? 128 damn dollars a week. And what do you make? A quarter of a million dollars a year. $7,000 a week. And you just sit there behind that desk in that green jacket and that pukey-looking tie, looking glamorous. Well, I'm worth every penny I make. I carry you. So? So what? So that's the news. <laughs> That is the news. instructor for the cellulite sisters now we all know the human body is a vile disgusting corporal blob a real breeding ground for temptation and evil but as long as we're stuck in our bodies we might as well keep them in good shape huh okay let's start with a real trouble spot for most practicing catholics the knees a little genuflection exercise should do that okay kneel bless up and rest kneel bless up and rest kneel bless up and rest good how does that feel you should feel a warm glow spreading up the legs and throughout the thighs. <laughs> feel too good. Okay, now I've received a lot of letters from people asking me about excessive guilt. And I have a little exercise you'll probably want to try for that. Okay, and <laughs> prostrate. <laughs> and grovel, grovel, grovel. Oh, and rest. And grovel, grovel. Yes, you probably want to try that one with a friend 
whipping you, or you can spread broken glass on the floor beneath you. Good for the soul and great for the abdomen muscles. Okay. Oh, we're about out of time here, I see. Uh, listen, I just want to remind you, uh, keep up that 40-day fast, and uh, if you can, why don't you jog around a barren wilderness whenever you can, okay? I'm going to finish up with a little communion exercise. Until next time, this is Sister Mary Innocent wishing you a very heavenly body. And Neil, come out. Kids, here he is, Mr. Science. Mr. Science, Mr. Science. Ah, I swear she was only 16. That's what she said. I, I'm in a... ah. Ah. What do you want? Ah. It's Donald. Are <laughs> well, you going to teach us something today, Mr. Science? That's right. That's right. Uh, we're going to learn uh, today. To make coffee. Go over there. Go over there. Never mind why coffee. Just do it. Now, you put the kettle on there and turn it on. And it boils. You know why it boils? No. Because it's hot. That's why. Now, come on over here. <laughs> now, you got a cigarette? No. I got one here. Never mind. Here's another experiment. This is, uh... Combustion, Sam. Now, see this a lighter? See that? Now, I light it. Mmm. And that end gets hot, and that's combustion. And you suck it in your lungs. You know where your lungs are? You do? Yeah. I know where one of mine is. It's in a hospital in a jar. Never mind that. All right. Where's my coffee? Come on, hurry up, hurry up. Eddie, you gotta move faster than that. You know that. Now look, if scientists fooled around all the time, where would we be today? In a cave. Wouldn't be such a bad idea either. Living in a cave with... Come on, hurry up, will you? You're never gonna make it, you know that. Come here. That's good. Oh, that's good coffee. You're learning, you know that? You're a bright kid. But you know what? Mr. Science is very tired, so why don't you get lost? But you promised to teach us something. That's right, I did. My, I keep my promises, don't I? So yeah. turn on the TV. We'll learn about TV. <laughs> Smart. Well, yeah. If you dislike Freud intentions... Isn't that funny? <laughs> That's smart, isn't it? Freud presented Ibsen with a, a whopping bill. I don't know why you get colors, because there's scanners in there. Use your head. You gotta learn to use your head. Look, freak. What the hell am I doing morning shows for? I'm rich. I don't know this. someone else. So, what is it with me? Let me clue you in, Pat. Unsightly facial hair. Ooh, but you can do something about it. I can. Why don't you go see Mr. Bruce at the House of Beauty? Thanks, Sue. One thing. This is Mr. Bruce. Girls, if you're not becoming to him, you should be coming to me. So why don't you just march your buns right down here to the House of Beauty, Monday through Saturdays, 9 to 7. And I don't work on Sundays. Want to dance? Sure. Say, where are you being all my life? That's me, Mr. B, at the House of Beauty. And now, here's Larnell Jefferson with the Black Perspective on the news. Uh, there'll be a meeting uh, there of the Afro-American Legal Aid Society at 2,211 States Avenue uh, discussing legal aid for the non-white residents of Greenfield County. 
Uh, Reverend Jesse Jackson was in town uh, yesterday discussing Operation Push with the Greenfield County residents. Wait a minute, uh, hold on. Hey, look, hey. What are you? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, obviously this isn't Larnell Jefferson. Uh, as you probably know, it's Bob Clark, our weatherman. Bob, what are you doing? Larnell's sick. I'm just filling in for him. Why didn't you get somebody black? You're white. He's the only black announcer we got. Besides, thanks for telling everybody I'm not black. I'm sure they wouldn't have noticed if you hadn't made such a big thing out of it. Oh, come on, Bob. Are you kidding me? Look at that outfit you've got on. That's the most racist thing I've ever seen in my life. Racist? Yeah. Let me tell you about racist. Since I've had this makeup on, I've noticed people have been treating me differently. Yeah, talking down to me as if I'm some kind of different person. Well, I don't blame them. That kind of thing went out without Jolson. Jolson was a honky. You have no right to talk to me like that. I'm not coming back here to do anything until I get some respect. Um, I'd like to apologize, ladies and gentlemen, for that tasteless display of white arrogance. Uh, I can assure you something like that will never happen again. And now, here's Erica Jameson with the feminist perspective on the news. Hi. Well, there was a women's lib meeting today on the auditorium... Wait a minute, hold on. Hey, what, Earl, what are you doing? Why, whatever do you mean? I'm not Earl. You're I'm Earl, just... you know it. What are you doing? <clears throat> Jessica phoned in sick, Floyd. I thought maybe I could fill in for her and people would notice. Uh, I'm sorry. I offended anybody. Forget anyway. it. Just forget it. Now, that's all the news there is tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. I'm Guy Lafleur. I'm Daryl Sittler. I use a Daryl Sittler hockey stick. I use a Daryl Sittler hockey stick. Cut! Take two. I'm Guy Lafleur. I'm Daryl Sittler. And I use a Daryl Sittler hockey stick. I use a Guy Lafleur hockey stick. Hey, Guy, how about some cornerbacks, eh? All right, All right sure hey. thing, Daryl. Oh, oh, boy, I bet these are good, huh? Oh, Got yeah. Real malt flavor. Smells good, too. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't do these things. Cut! I'm sorry. They're hot on my gums. You lose your plate, Daryl? Yeah, I lost my plate in Boston. Uh, you lost your dentures in Boston. Why don't you push it down with some milk and mush it into your puss? That's all right. Cornerbacks, take three. I'm Guy Lafleur. I'm Daryl Sittler. And I use a Daryl Sittler hockey stick. I use a Guy Lafleur hockey stick. Hey, Guy, how about some cornerbacks? Hey? An excellent idea. All right, eh? Let's try some mm. of this. Oh, it looks yummo. Sure is. Mm, it smells so good, too. Mm, See what's yeah. going on? It's got poor, dishon... I some French. I don't speak French. I'm sorry. What's your problem? Ah, huh? look at it in English. It's on English. Well, what the uh, hell's it got two languages on the fourth channel? I only speak English. Because it's a bilingual country. It is not both, my friend. One language, one goddamn song. God says, we. Thank you for Hi, I'm Guy Lafleur. I'm Daryl Siddler. And I use a Daryl Siddler hockey stick. Guy Lafleur hockey stick. Guy, Guy wants to play with it? Yeah, sure thing, Daryl. Hey, this stuff looks a okay, huh? Yeah, it sure does. Boy, I could try some mm, malt flavor and everything. And some Pepsi Cola with it? Hey! Hey, look, that's about to be, Daryl. Oh, God, that's a joke. Oh, God, that's a joke. Oh, God, that's a joke. Wednesday nights at 9, Masterpiece Theatre presents a series of plays specifically adapted for television. The first, under Parsley, a moving portrait of a family of Welsh garnish farmers. Well, look at you, Di, picking at your food. What's wrong with you, then? Rain came again last night, girl, and wiped out the North Maraschino cherry field. They laid off over 300 men today. Oh, well, I didn't want to say anything, but this is the last of the parsley. But there's plenty of croutons up at Pontypridd. Oh, well, the croutons and the dill pickles are gone. They were wiped out by fire. Well, it's a long, lean winter, then. You're telling me? Good news, boys! They hurry open the oil of mine. Si, you and the boys better get down there before all the jobs are gone. Come on, boys. Good news couldn't have come at a better time. Emlyn Llewellyn Wilkins Jones, you're great for news. No, not the all of mines. I'll have no son of mine working in the pits. Poor Ronnie Gwynn died of fermental poisoning. I remember the funeral. His coffin was so light, he only needed three pallbearers. Never mind, girl. We'll be all right. Come on, boys. Masterpiece Theatre presents another in this series of 
specifically adapted for television productions, F. Fats Fitzgerald's classic novel, The Great Fats. Jay, darling, you look like you're putting on a little weight. When I feel great. We'll just be after the party. I don't want to miss the buffet. I hope there's lots of potato salad. <laughs> Another dramatic special, adapted from the ballet, Swan Lake. I'm so glad I didn't shoot you when I first met you. I guess I'll never understand just why I love you so much. Waiter, check please. Very good, sir. You'll forgive my saying so, sir. We don't get many swans in here. These prices, you won't get many more. <laughs> here, keep the change. Thank you, sir. I love the way you quack. It drives me crazy. Join me this season on Masterpiece Theater. adapted for television presentation of the memoirs of famed Russian playwright Anton Chekhov. Boris died just 73 years ago today. Still, I cannot think of it calmly. Seems only yesterday. But you, Sonia, you're already wearing white. I am radiant today. More beautiful than ever. I feel younger than yesterday or even the day before yesterday. You're younger than everyone. Oh, I'll tell you, madam. I have lived a long time. They were arranging my funeral when I was a young child. But I did not die. I will keep on living. I'll live longer than everyone. That's true, I must say. Allow me to add, if I may, to be sure. I cannot but agree with you there. Quiet! I think I hear him. Anton is coming. Anton Chekhov is really coming. Do you think you remember how amazing I am? My father was a peasant, an idiot. He taught me nothing, he understood nothing, thank you. All he did was beat me when he was drunk, and always with a big stick. He had a big stick! It's true, I must say, allow me to add, if I may, to be sure. I cannot but agree with you there. You knew my father? No, I don't think so, dear boy. Even so, someday all men will have jobs. We will all work seven days a week, 12 hours a day, and no holidays. Except me, of course. I've never had a job and don't intend to start now. That's true, I may say. Shut up! Remind me of my husband. Boris died just 73 years ago today. And he thought he'd live longer than me. <laughs> I've been waiting for Chekhov all night. I haven't slept at all. But I'm still radiant. Am I not? Captain! Captain! Chekhov! You've come! The good doctor is back. Dr. Chekhov is here. Dr. Chekhov. There must be 
some mistake. I'm not Dr. Chekhov. I am Mr. Chekhov. Check out the transporter room with the rest of the landing party. Scotty here. We've got a wee malfunction in the transporter. We'll have you back aboard in a minute. I seem to have landed in 19th century Russia. Oh, is my beautiful Moscow. Was it as radiant as I am? Uh, that's many of your old friends there. Tell me, are they still dead? I must resist this torturous cling on nightmare. Beat me up! I must resist! Cling on nightmare up onto the ship. I'm radiant up here, too. Sick Peter Bridge. Jim, get these people out of here. Boris died just 73 years ago. It's true, I must agree. Shut up, for God's sakes. What's happening? You see, these people have jobs, they work. They're all over engineering, too. Captain, we're losing control of the ship. He joined the mommies because he loved the uniform. Then they took him out of the uniform and put him on the street. He's Curtis Edgett, plain clothes Monty. What's happening, man? You cats know where I can score some good weed. I've got plenty of bread, man. No sweat. Undercover agent for the Mounties, Curtis Edgett, faces danger every week on SCTV. Who is it? It's the plumber. I'm here to fix your sink. Plain clothes, Monty. Watch for it on SCTV. And finally in the news today, a Mr. Frank Kramer of Tonawanda, New York, has decided to give up gardening for a while. It seems Mr. Kramer was having trouble cutting through a clump of crabgrass and couldn't understand why, until he looked down at his foot, only to find he had lopped off four of his toes. <laughs> 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 and now, and now, here with today's editorial is Earl. Right. <laughs> Getting serious for a moment. I'd like to uh, take my hat off to medical research. You know, a cure for cancer is probably just around the uh, corner. Oh, sure, we sit back in our easy chairs and say, well, why doesn't somebody discover a cure for cancer? Well... People are discovering a cure, and it's happening right now. Well, well some people are acting like retarded. Let's face it. You're not the type of person who lines up for the latest Stallone film, and you're not interested in seeing another Hollywood formula comedy. That's why we bring you the Showcase Review. Every night, see the very best foreign and festival award-winning films. These are the movies you've always wanted to see, but they never seem to make it to your local cinema. Great films from around the world. Every night on the Showcase Review at 11 p.m. Eastern and Mountain Time right here on Showcase. <laughs>